Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be going through the derivation of the 1D conservation of momentum equation from the integral form that you see here. The first term here is the time rate of change of the momentum in the control volume. The second term is the convective movement of momentum across the boundaries of the control volumes over the surfaces. Uh, the term here is due to body forces and then this is the pressure term. So we're going to make some assumptions to simplify this down so that we can get this 1D, nice 1D derivation. The first is that we're talking about inviscid flow, there's no viscous effects and you'll note that I don't even have the viscous term in here. Usually it would show up uh, over here with the pressure term. The second assumption that we'll make is that it's steady so we can get rid of this term here. Nothing's changing with time, right? So DDT is equal to zero. Uh, and then the third assumption is that there's no body forces, so then I can also say that this term goes to zero. And what we're left with is the convective uh, term here and then the pressure term which I've just moved to this side and set everything equal to zero. Okay, so now I've written the same equation up here and you can notice that this is actually a vector equation so we can break this into three different equations um, but we're only going to consider the x direction because we're deriving this for a 1D assumption. So I've rewritten this equation just with one change to consider only the x direction and that's to change this velocity here to a u. And so it's the same equation just with V changes to U. This is, U is the X component of velocity uh, or the X direction component of velocity. And you'll note that this V hasn't changed and that's because this is the, is the scalar product, dot product of the velocity vector with this vector as well, this surface area vector. And so I can rewrite the DS into this form here where we have a normal vector and then this is just a number uh, and we're going to integrate over this surface so we're going to integrate over the area of the control volume which I'll draw on the next board. Now again I've rewritten the equation up here but I've substituted in that ds vector is equal to n hat da scalar up into here so now you can look at this control volume over here that I've drawn and you'll see we have incoming flow from the left, outgoing flow on the right, the left is going to be blue, the right is going to be green from now on, and you'll see that there are these surface normals that always by definition act outward from the control volume. So on the left we have an outward acting in the negative x direction, so that's n hat 1, and on the right we have it acting in the same direction as the positive x direction, that's n hat 2. And these will come into play when we're taking our dot products and, uh, and up here. So. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take these surface integrals and we're going to end up getting four terms because we're taking, for this term we're taking a surface, we're integrating over the left surface and we're integrating over the right surface. And then for this term we're doing the same, integrating over the left surface and the right surface. So we end up with four terms that you see in this equation right here. And so this first term is the integral over the one surface, the state one. And so we just have rho 1 times u1, the scalar velocity, and then here we have the velocity at 1 dotted with the outward normal at 1, and then we have multiplied by the scalar area because we've integrated over the surface. We've already done the integration here. And then here we have the pressure at 1 times the n hat 1 times a1 because we're on the left surface and then similarly we have these two terms for the right hand surface here. Now we can talk about the dot products and the signs of, uh, of this term, this term, this term, and this term here and so for the dot product uh, you'll note that the that the velocity vector is pointing in the positive x direction which is the opposite direction of the outward surface normal so by that definition this term here is going to end up being negative u1 here, this term here, because the n hat 1 is pointing in the negative x direction, this term here will be negative a1. Now here, the velocity vector is pointing in the same direction as the outward normal, so here we have a positive u2. And then here, because the outward normal is, facing, is uh, pointing in the positive x direction, we have positive a2. And now we can simplify this. So now you can see here the blue for the left side, green for the right side still. I've just substituted in that dot product with negative u1 and then negative a1 here, positive u2, positive a2. And if we multiply this out, we get, and I'm just putting this term first, um, 
and we get negative P1A1 minus rho one U1 squared A1 plus these terms here, P2A2 plus rho two U2 squared A2 is equal to zero. Uh, we're saying that we're deriving this for one D, so we can assume that the area here is the same as the area here. A1 is equal to A2, and you'll note that they all cancel out then, and we get the final one D conservation of momentum equation as P1 plus rho one U1 squared is equal to P2 plus rho two U2 squared. Thanks for watching.